Hey there, a huge thank you to all the names on screen right now. The Renegades who click the join button down below and contribute to the channel financially. Hugely appreciate that, my friends. If you do enjoy the content, we stream live at twitch.tv forward slash let's suffer together. But you can always click that like button, subscribe and ring that bell if you want to support the content even further and be notified about when we put out fresh content most days. Enjoy the show, my friends. Hey there, welcome back to Noise I'm Suffer of Let's Suffer Together. Back at you with a special little video. So, as you may have gathered from the title we well i have been doing a bit of research and have been doing a bit of research and casual runs in noito where we're trying to find out there we go the last little remaining secret in the game now you might be thinking there's two remaining secrets in the game there are the eyes however we are completely ignoring those just because, one, they're boring as shit, it's not really content, and, um, the cauldron, which we're gonna get into, is a lot more satisfying when it concerns the lore of the game. You know, going into not so much Finnish mythology, but alchemy. And, um, firstly, you know, you'll need to know where it is. So we're in the second holy mountain currently, where we're gonna, you know, exit, go into the third floor. Now, as you can see, I'm quite beefed up, and I've actually gone to a few parallel worlds. So, spoilers incoming, of course, for quite uh, many a thing. Some of the things you can do in the game when it concerns, uh, you know, outside of the regular path. And, um, again, like I said, the last remaining secret of the game that no one's figured out yet. So, you just come over it. The best way to get to it is pretty much this way. You can get in through the Heesey base, but I wouldn't advise it because you're going in sideways. Where it's just better to come over here because you get a natural path down here now you can use black holes you can use loomy drills mat eaters any way you can get through extremely dense rock that's your way down so you find this way you can actually fill in the eye and you find in the third floor sometimes with teleport liquid but i wouldn't really you know they just dig down here now the problem is if you don't have all seeing eye you might accidentally send a black hole down and you might destroy the cauldron. Now, this is it. Now, it's got a big tablet behind it. It's got some pillars right here, but no one knows what it does. There's literally zero details about it. Now, what you might not know about me, by education, I'm a historian. So I love looking into, you know, historical sources. Now, this game at its core is about Finnish mythology and alchemy. When it concerns something like a cauldron, we're probably looking more... At the alchemical side, the Finnish mythology, I could come into it, but from what I'm looking at, really, when it concerns a lot of the side quests and the missions in the game, it's more the alchemical philosophy that really comes and uh, grabs you by the balls. So, one thing, you cannot run mods while doing this. Now, I've got an idea as you might have figured out from the title. And I'm going to go in depth about, you know, what I'm thinking, why I'm thinking it, and some actual historical alchemical context. Along with that, I've got some stuff to show you as well, and all examples will be, uh, you know, delved into quite nicely. So, you cannot run mods. You will not be able to find this room if you're running mods. So, you know, you've got to run completely vanilla, Make sure you don't shoot a black hole down here. I've done it so many times by accident. You know, just shooting once, getting rid of this sand. The sand covers the entirety of this place. So you use a regular drill. Some of the, this is extremely dense rock. Even this cauldron is extremely dense rock. You can char it. I wouldn't use explosives because explosives can powder even hard materials like EDR. So I wouldn't do that. This tablet in the background, uh, it's... It's something. Now, there's a few theories out there. One of the ones I subscribe to is this is the... If you've ever seen Fury's video about how getting the 34th orb, the way we do it for that little red pixel we get, which I'm on a new save file at the moment, so I don't have mine. But um, we basically cheated. We used outside information to be able to get that 34th orb, get the end of everything, great chest. And to get the uh, 34th orb, get the sample bar and uh, win the game. There's a strong theory that this is how you get the 30, the legitimate 34th orb. It could be many other things on top of that, but nah, who really knows? 
However, the one thing I really subscribe to in conversations I've had is to solve this, you either need to solve the eyes, which may be connected to the cauldron. It might be a list of things you need to do. Or you are in tune with the scientific, I say scientific, the chemical and philosophical and spiritual understanding and nature of alchemy itself and how it connects to the game more importantly and why they've chosen to put side quests in that they've put in. Now I've got a few things to show you like I'm saying and I can only do so much. I'm investigating myself so please if you have any like questions, any ideas or if you want to run yourself please feel free. And again just use kind of my analysis to you know deviate your own path. I'm currently on a run where I'm going to be doing a lot of essence work. There is, if you'll excuse me, just change over so I can sort of start showing you stuff. Right. Game law. When it concerns the essences, you find four main essences around the world. You've got fire, water, earth, and air. There is an essence of spirits. However, we could argue that is a corrupting force. Uh, we don't know. However, we might actually end up using it because there are multiple ways to utilize it for something that's very important. Now, when it concerns the moon up in the sky, there are multiple ways of solving that little mini quest. But the four essences represent the four elements that form this visible world. So, again, highly important things you can pick up. They're little perks you find all around the world. Going to the very bottom, a legend also tells that all the elements, all the elements, so we don't know. So at the very start, you've got the four essences represent the four elements. But at the end, it changes narrative. It goes, all the elements. Is spirits involved in that? We don't know. Again, the wording used is a bit annoying. A legend also tells that all the elements originated from the egg of sky and returned to it one day. Now, the egg of sky is the moon up in the sky. When you first start the game, there is a cutscene. That could be very important also to pay attention to. You only ever get to see it once unless you keep on deleting your save file. I've seen it quite a lot. and it, There are three eggs of the game, again, following certain aspects of Finnish mythology. The whole egg thing is quite important. I'm not exactly sure how egg connects to alchemy, but... I don't know. Again, I'm still researching me. However, when it, con when it connects to the essences, the moon, there are plenty of things to do with the essences at the moon. There are, in fact, three things you can do with the moon up in the sky. There is another moon down below. We may do work with that, with the essences. We don't know yet. The dark moon is messy. It could be a corruption. It could be a corrupting force. That you might not want to mess with if you're trying to go for a certain outcome. Now, the reason I'm talking about the essences and the moon is because the summit called the Mutus Liber, where it's an alchemical kind of illustrative text that's interpreted by, well, self opposed alchemists that it shows how to proceed to achieve the magnum opus, whose ultimate purpose is to attain the Philosopher's Stone. Now, in and of itself, that's not too special because there's a million and one texts out there purporting to how to obtain the Philosopher's Stone, which are all complicated and you'll never understand it, and they use language that historically is just dead, and you, even if you were back in that time, you probably wouldn't have understood it anyway. Again, it's a very kind of closed and niche group alchemy that is very secretive and more spiritual than actually chemical. I found from my own reading. However, mutus liber. And as we're going through this, think about the essences. Again, the sun quest, the moon quests. You can do multiple moon quests in a run. Now, if you're on a regular run, you can do a moon quest. Throw a load of essences at the moon. Job done. You can then put a sun there. However, you cannot do in a regular run two essences on the same moon. Two essence runs. 
So if we quickly just go to the tree, say you want to do the void moon and the drunk moon, you would need to do the void moon in a regular run, go to new game plus and then do the drunk moon, and then go to new game plus two, and then do the gourd moon. You can, however, which is actually impossible. With a dark moon, there's only one essence of fire, so say you couldn't do gourd moon for the regular sun and, go and blood moon for the blood moon. There's just only one essence of fire limiting you so you would need to do one at a time really however the reason i find it interesting there's multiple ways of doing the moon but you can still do them all and you can go forward while doing them and why i'm kind of really excited about this line of thinking when it comes towards the cauldron the cauldron exists in new game plus so you can carry it with you now also, a connection where the Void Moon, on certain days, there is a calendar that hopefully I'll be able to get an actual link down in the description. I'll ask my good friend Priscip if he can help me out with that, which will show you kind of dates where the cauldron will sometimes be destroyed by Void Liquid. Sometimes it will not. It's just on a schedule. Nothing we can do about it. However, since we can go to the moon, and one of the most basic things we can do with the moon is void moon it with four essences. The moon turns into void liquid. There's an instant kind of connection between that and the cauldron. Maybe it's one of the, you do not get telegraphing for this cauldron puzzle. If there is any telegraphing, this is it. And again, the reason I'm thinking this line of thinking with the whole moon thing and it being the start of something. A start of a process. When it concerns the whole egg, you see it at the cutscene at the start of the game. It's referred to as an egg. The whole idea of three eggs is very important. There's three different ways of doing the moon. There's three eyes, you know, final boss. There's three eyes everywhere. The imagery of three everywhere. Very important. You've got to remember that. But going back to the Mutus Lieber. Now, we'll, ha we'll try and count as we go along. No, I find it very rude. I don't, I don't think it's a cherub, but blowing trumpet in that poor dude's face. Come on, man. He's trying to sleep, dude. Um, the idea of red roses as well, alchemically, quite important. Let's, ugh. Let's go have a drink, but I'll, I'll keep going. But this is just the opening page. That all means something in the background, but blah. There's a moon. Wait. So again, the imagery more than anything. But if you notice right at the bottom... Um, that's a cauldron. <laughs> so, we're off to a good start, right? There's a sun. We have a sun in the game. There's a cauldron in the game. Right, my overall argument is that the devs use this as a rough guide. And as we go through, you might see why. And I hope you do. Let me know if I'm full of shit. Because I would love to know, you know your feelings on this as well. And if you can take it further, if you can drag me back, you know, please feel free in the comment section. Some things in this I really don't get. I am not initiated in alchemy. Put it that way. I am a historian. And I haven't really... Again, I did uni uh, history and it was uh, a good way of, you know, analysing sources. However, I have never studied alchemy as, you know... In an educational setting. I've always just, you know, while I've been playing Neuter, enjoyed it myself. So, you know, those two people down at the cauldron, you could argue it might be something else. But as we go through, you might start to see my point of view. Not, no idea what they're doing in the middle. Uh... Hmm, now that I look at it, it could be a big droplet of water. And the next frame, you might see why. Well, they've got... Ah, uh, not this one, actually. It's the next one. But the sun and the moon again. There's connection there. And we'll just, you know. Right. In On one of the tablets in the game, it talks about permanent water. And that being the start of the process. What I think they're doing here is collecting permanent water. Now, that can actually mean many things. From what I've read, permanent water can mean, you know, ice. Um, a body of water, like a lake. You know, falling from the sky. It just means anything. Again, alchemy is all over the place. However, this is kind of irrelevant to where we're going. Again, imagery, moon, sun. Again. 
this isn't the reason why I'm excited about this. They're pouring the water into the cauldron, they're doing alchemy. However, right, there's four main essences, right? Water, fire, wind, earth. What does this little dude who comes in from nowhere... Actually, she's already holding it. She's giving it to the dude. Four little dots after they've poured the water in, they've got another ingredient in their hands. Scooping it out or putting it in, don't know, but then giving it to that dude and they continue with their alchemy. And there's actually four different pots right there going through. The thing you'll notice in this is repetition. And I'll get to my point at the very end. You might recognize this little red thing. You might not. What I saw it as was the sun, st the sun stone. I might be wrong, but again, it's red. There's a familiarity there. This is what happens when you throw the sun seed. You kill the forgotten. You get the sun seed. You throw the sun seed onto the pyramid. You get the sun stone. There is another possible interpretation to what this little red thing is. But I'd prefer to think it's the Sunseed when we come into the game, because my argument is the devs are using this directly as a means to, you know, draw out certain ideas for their game. Also, a person what I might believe is a personification of the sun coming along and taking it away from them. Your cre I don't know, like, giving the sun seed to the sun? Don't know. But, but essences are still there. They've still got them. Have you seen them? The four little yellow dots. Now, that could be the essences themselves. Or, in the game at the top of the world, you've got essence destroyers. You can turn your essences into stones. You know, you've got the Tanakivi, the Ukaskivi, and the other two. Yes, I'm not good at pronouncing Finnish. I'm sorry. So they could either be the stones or they could be the essences. Keep that in mind as well. Because they're still yellow. Sorry. You've got the yellow ones there. Looking down here, they turn black. Well, they're there as well. So you've got two different ones now. You've either got those being essences or those being essences or those being stones or those being stones. But again, the process is kind of repeating. They're doing the same things over and over again. They're at the cauldron, doing a little bit of a, you know, a please, for the love of God, work. They're back getting water again. They start the process over again, maybe a little bit of a different process. You know, using the stones, using the seed. The sun and the moon all together. <laughs> Next to the cauldron. Praying at the cauldron again with the... I don't know if that's water. Now the water droplet, if it is a water droplet, it has a sun and a moon in it. Back out getting water. <laughs> doing the seed, doing the thing. Different, slight different process, right? Slight different process. Much like slight different process. Void Moon, Drunk Moon, Gord Moon. It's a slightly, dif slightly different but similar processes. Now, I'm not saying I've clocked it. However, it's the direction I'm going in. The only problem is, it's not going to be the end. So my thesis about the cauldron is, a part of the answer is already there. We've been given it. It's the... Since we can do various things on one run, we have to do it in the right order. And that is the beginning. Whether there is a middle and an end, there is going to be. Definitely. <laughs> we need to work on that. The answer is somewhere, whether it's in other alchemical texts, whether it can be derived out of this. I mean, you've got the scales here with the sun and the moon on. You've got scales in the game. I don't know what, the, what they're doing there. Rolling pin, tennis racket. 
But it's the repetition that I found interesting. And again, Mutus Liba being a nice little illustrative. I hope you see the connections there as well. Again, I'm potentially reaching at certain points and inserting things in because it's convenient for me. I'll fully admit that as a historian. And then at the end, they're just um, job done, you know? So whether any other processes can be drawn out of this when it concerns the cauldron, because you can guarantee, say you do Void Moon regular run, say you do the Drunk Moon, New Game Plus One, say you do the Gord Moon, New Game Plus Two, say you build a Sun, New Game Plus Two or New Game Plus Three, there's an interesting thing about New Game Plus Three. In the third floor, sometimes on New Game Plus Three, there is an altar that appeared in the trailer of the game when it first came out. Hmm. And also, the cauldron follows you into New Game Pluses. So again, whether you have to do something at the cauldron, say in the regular run, New Game Plus One, New Game Plus Two, the interesting thing is, again, when you do the Void Moon, you get Void Liquid. When you do the Drunk Moon, you get Spirits. When you do the Gourd Moon, you get Lively Concoction. You could argue the way you make and some of the thoughts behind Void Liquid is that it's a failed experiment. It's a liquid that's gone wrong. Spirits, on the other hand, is a use. It's a liquid that can be used in alchemy. It's got a function, it's got a purpose, but it is not an end result. But then you've got Lively Concoction, which is arguably one of the end results of alchemy. Kind of like an elixir, a healing agent that can keep you alive. You've got, you know, the Philosopher's Stone, which turns you know, materials to gold. A sign of purity, basically. It's more of a philosophical sign of purity. And then you've got an elixir of immortality. Possibly LC. But if you notice, the liquids get better. So you've kind of got an order there. I doubt you've got a recipe, but how they apply to the cauldron, who knows? Again, it's going to be really interesting hearing what you've got to say down in the co uh, comments. Let me just check I haven't missed anything out. Nope, I think we're all good, my friends, but thank you for sticking with me. Again, I hope some of this made sense. You will probably have to look into certain things if you're, you know, not fully toured or schooled in the game. Hopefully most of you are. If you're watching this, I really hope so. But I want to hear what you have to say about the cauldron. If you've done any work on it yourself, you know, let me know down in the comments how you see this kind of analysis towards the cauldron and if you think it makes sense if you think it could actually be uh you know productive useful in driving movement towards the cauldron well let me know if you want to do some work let me know as well we'll work with you we want to get this done we need bodies you know it's a call to arms in this in effect that uh i can't do all the work alone the problem is the amount of deviations and alternative ways of approaching this even through the kind of set narrow path of following the moon void through the new game plus system do you include the dark moon do you build the light sun and the dark sun on the light moon and the dark moon do you build two light suns top and bottom mm. everything is just adds more and more problems as you think about it however being one of the most difficult gaming puzzles ever created not think we should actually work at it i don't know anybody apart from me priscop and a few others over on twitch again liberate the forks as well and i don't want to miss anyone out but yeah uh, i'm pooped i've been talking about this all day lie on twitch anyway over at twitch.tv forward slash let's stuff together come and join us for some great you know alchemical and spiritual not your talk been a pleasure, my friends. You take it easy. Join us over on Twitch. Get down in the comment section. Click like. You know, links down in the description. Thank you for your support, my friends. You take it easy. Enjoy the rest of your day wherever you are in the world. And uh, I'll see you when I see you. Take it easy, guys. Peace.